Chapter 4 Our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, steeling himself for Gran's wrath. Luca was alone. The house was empty. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice, but I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please. You have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, 
He could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just static. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response, his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Lolo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. <laughs> The three shared a determined look.
Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Fear gripped Luca's throat. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. He slumped to his knees. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward. A warm smile on his face.
Luca's grip tightened on the MCDC. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with the end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. Thank <laughs> Thank you.
Well, time to bust out the tickles. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tisha's arm. Tears began to form in Tisha. Beck redoubled her efforts. Iggy's eyes darted around. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Well, time to bust out the strange. Beck stared and it's the only sign of life. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of Iggy's clothes were... Iggy's voice began to slur. Person at the warehouse. The strange ooh was Rolo caught up in a. glanced toward Luca. <laughs> Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quick. Gran is going to kill. If he hurried, he might just make it home before... Chapter 4, Our Harvest. Oh. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly... Luca was, the house was empty.
Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small. His father sat in without turning. Why don't you? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped inside. Where are fish? Luca's father gave well. Luca closed, holding it at interest with a prep. The water except the raw the pond. Sometimes we pallid. I Luca scrammed. Dad, sorry. The relentless Dad. Look out! His father casual. None of it's your fault, you know. Dad, we have to. Luca grabbed his father. Please, you. The ice crack. That's the thing. His chest. You toss your hook. A shock of searing. The chair tipped backward. Luca tried to stop. You watched the eye. Dad, I don't. The gentle rustle of. Luca's eyes struggled. <laughs> Faintly, he could hear Rollo. Lolo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were... The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of... Lolo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and... heard a group of he dashed behind the Mr. Tolliver paused shift Mr. Tolliver took one long quiet Three shared a determined. The two boys shared a mischievous grin. Thank you.